I simply want to make every better car, no matter what kind of pattern they have. The auto industry has been dominated for decades by China and America, both of which have paved the way with top-class EV drive systems and fossil fuel combustion engines. All new engine. A 2.5L dynamic force engine. But all that changed when Toyota CEO Koji Sato unveiled a powerful hybrid hydrogen engine for their next-gen Mirai. Mirai means the future. And Toyota would like us to believe that this car is the future. This model is slated for global release by 2027 and has features that would render China's best models outdated on launch day. How does it work? And what was the story behind it? Join us as we unpack Toyota's latest invention that destroys all other car manufacturers. Koji Sato's announcement of the Mirai's upcoming hybrid hydrogen engine has left the auto industry in shock. Toyota is doubling down on developing hydrogen combustion engines. What made the public reveal so shocking was that it came at one of the worst times for the auto industry. As of today, the stocks for all mainstream cars are plummeting due to government overregulation and the ever-increasing cost of batteries. Unsold EVs are stacking up at various places across the world, and many global supply chains are in chaos. Thanks to these problems, China's dominance in the global EV space is on the verge of collapsing, and the United States is slowly losing its grip on combustion engine exports. It was right in the middle of this mess when Toyota unveiled its latest and greatest invention, and if industry analysts are correct, it's one that would turn the entire market on its head. Interestingly enough, all that isn't even the most frightening part of this whole situation. So stay until the end as we unpack the full story of how this engine came about and its glow score. The foundation. The foundation of Toyota's hybrid hydrogen engine is aimed at providing a more sustainable source of power. Hydrogen fuel cell cars. And how do they work? We'll actually be looking at the architecture and packaging of the Toyota Mirai, which promises comfort without harm to the environment. What began as a lab experiment by William Nicholson and Sir Anthony Carlyle in the year 1800 has now grown into a promising industry that is poised to take over, thanks to Toyota's latest invention. But even more intriguing was what led Toyota to this point. Now picture this for a moment. An engine that only produces water as a byproduct, runs on the most abundant element in the universe with the highest energy density, and performs much better than most cars on the market. Many thought this dream was impossible until the mid-20th century when NASA engineers chose hydrogen as the fuel source for their best rockets going beyond our atmosphere. This was when hydrogen went from being a mere footnote to a technological dream. But this was also where things got interesting. Even though using hydrogen as a global fuel source was possible, many found it unrealistic because the infrastructure was too difficult to get off the ground. Most engines at the time ran on gasoline, which was far easier to get and store. But that was until a global crisis shocked the world in bigger ways than ever before. When the 1970s kicked in and the oil crisis almost destroyed the global economy, several nations that relied on imported fuel started looking for different alternatives. This was when various engineers began to build alarming prototypes of cars that ran on hydrogen, based on NASA's ideas and concepts. Many aspiring engineers and visionaries were allured by hydrogen as a potential source of power for all kinds of machines. And who could blame them? Hydrogen, after all, compared to gasoline, was much cleaner, more efficient, and had the freedom to come up as an industry without the political entanglements that led to the global oil crash of the 70s. But 20 years of global research passed, and many car manufacturers and engineering firms had given up on the idea. By the mid-1990s, leading companies like BMW and Mazda were still trying better ways of using hydrogen, but all their efforts went down the drain. In 1997, Toyota shocked the industry by mass-producing the world's first hydrogen hybrid car, called the Prius. This happened at a time when the world laughed at the concept of EVs going mainstream. Yet Toyota set the foundation by going for something even more complex, the hybrid system, known as the Hybrid Synergy Drive combined the strengths of a gasoline engine with the flexibility of an electric motor to produce a system that reduced emissions without affecting performance or practicality. But while this was revolutionary, it didn't accomplish what Toyota had in mind. They wanted to produce a vehicle that relied only on hydrogen as fuel. At this point, 
the promise of hydrogen as a globally clean source of energy, was looking grim. However, the big day came on November 18, 2002, through a stunning event in Tokyo where Toyota turned the industry on its head by unveiling their early hydrogen fuel cell vehicles to the world. They worked without gasoline combustion by converting hydrogen and oxygen to electricity through a fuel cell. The world was amazed to see powerful engines with emissions anyone could safely smell and drink. But despite how promising this was, there were many reasons to question its usability. Could global infrastructure catch up to this new source of energy? How would people support a fuel source that couldn't be found at a local gas station? Still, from the early 1990s up until 2005, the world was hopeful that hydrogen was the option to dethrone gasoline, not EVs. Various governments poured billions of dollars into making this dream a reality for Toyota. So what could possibly go wrong? Under hydrogen, a lot, as we shall see. For all the hype and excitement over the promising future of free energy, Toyota and every other auto company that invested in hydrogen cell technology quickly hit a wall. You see, while hydrogen was a miracle fuel on paper, with enough power to launch shuttles and rockets, storing and producing it in sustainable amounts was a massive economic and corporate nightmare. Interestingly enough, these are the problems that still haunt the industry today, and perhaps the biggest hurdle Toyota faced before their latest invention. Their biggest problem at the time. Infrastructure. What Toyota CEO Katsuaki Watanabe failed to realize was that while it was quite easy to build a hydrogen engine, building global systems to keep these cars working was an entirely different ballgame. Infrastructure problem. Unlike gasoline or electricity, which rely on cheap and existing systems functioning in almost every country across the world, hydrogen requires new kinds of systems that no company had ever built on a global scale. We're talking about high-pressure pipelines, specialized storage, and refueling stations that could handle hydrogen in the safest way possible. This is because hydrogen in its purest form is much more dangerous and expensive to prepare than gasoline. Building such technologies doesn't happen overnight, and Toyota would have to learn this the hard way. Their early hydrogen fuel cell vehicles to the world. They worked without gasoline combustion by converting hydrogen and oxygen to electricity through a fuel cell. The world was amazed to see powerful engines with emissions anyone could safely smell and drink. But despite how promising this was, there were many reasons to question its usability. Could global infrastructure catch up to this new source of energy? How would people support a fuel source that couldn't be found at a local gas station? Still, from the early 1990s up until 2005, the world was hopeful that hydrogen was the option to dethrone gasoline, not EVs. Various governments poured billions of dollars into making this dream a reality for Toyota. So what could possibly go wrong? Under 